Greg here. Listen, have you got any leftover rice? I know whenever I'm making rice, I always have some leftover. And well, today is no exception, I've got quite a bit. But what do you do with it? You can like uh, make some fried rice or something, but today I'm going to make something that I always ask Bernice to make for me. It's a congee or a porridge. Yes, that's right, it's porridge. It's not using oats, it's using rice. And I tell you what, this meal is so awesome. I just love it. The flavors are fantastic. So let's start making it. Now, over here, I've got the ingredients that I'm using today. I've just got two carrots. I've got some spring onions. Now, I've got a bit of ginger, just for garnishing later. I've got 500 grams of pork here, pork mince. You could use chicken mince if you really wanted to, but the pork gives it an awesome flavor. And uh, I've got some chicken stock, or beef stock, or pork stock. Just some stock, you'll need some. And some pepper, and of course some rice. Now, I'm not too sure how much rice this is. It could be between three or four cups of cooked rice. So anyway, we just got to guesstimate. And it's super easy to throw together. So grab your rice, and we'll just put it into a nice big pot here. This is still cold, like my heart. Except my heart's hot and warm. And caring and sharing, isn't that right, Bernice? Uh-huh. You didn't sound very convincing then. Must have been that Christmas present I got you, those socks. Yes, she still hasn't got over that. Oh, I better turn this on. We'll turn it right up to the highest mark. And now we just need to add, I've already got some boiled water here, so we'll just add some boiling water in just to cover it. So that's about, ooh, about a centimeter sort of over the rice. We can add some more water if we need to, but we do need to add some stock into there. So I'll add, uh, gee, how much do I use? That was about one and a half litres for between three and four cups of rice that was. So I'll just add as much stock as I think I will need. A few spoons worth. I love sodium. I can already see Bernice's face going, That's too much! Stop! <laughs> it's not enough, I don't think. I'd like to add more, but I better not because I'll get in trouble. So I've just got a few slices of ginger here, which I'll just throw in. And we'll throw the carrots in. This was two carrots, which I've just diced up nice and finely into little cubes. So now I've got the 500 grams or about a pound's worth of uh, pork mince here. So I'll throw that in and the hot water will cook that down and impart that porky goodness throughout the water. Mm -mm. So now we'll start breaking up this pork so it'll dissolve into the water and it will slowly cook as well as it's boiling in that water oops <laughs> I wasn't adding more stock burnies I promise I can always add extra uh, salt later I guess so we just got to bring this to the boil now Keep going, keep going. You can already see that the pork has started cooking. It's almost nearly cooked. So basically, we just need to boil this until the carrots are nice and soft. But we'll just get it to the boil. And also we want the rice to break down into like a mush. So it's like a mushy sort of porridge. I know you're probably thinking, oh, that sounds gross, but believe me, it is not. It is top shelf. If I had a restaurant, I'd serve this dish in it. It's really good for people with no teeth. You could probably even suck it through a straw, if your straw was big enough. So maybe for your grandma or something, or grandfather, or someone who likes fighting, this is an awesome meal for them. In Asia, this is really popular for the sick people to eat. Because it's just warming and it's you know, simple to eat. It's nice, simple, slides down your gullet. What more do you want when you're sick? Maybe some of those Panadol forts. Maybe some of those 
tablets with the codeine in it. Oh yeah. Or some chocolates. Or some Baileys on ice. That'd be nice. Mm, so many things. Maybe I should get sick. Imagine how all those trees you're getting. Oh, except antibiotics from Thailand. That's, that's the one thing you don't want. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so I was sick in Thailand. I went to the doctor and got some antibiotics. And part of me swelled right up. <laughs> I won't tell you which part, but I'll tell you what, I looked impressive for a few days. Boil! Boil! <sighs> so now once it started boiling, all we need to do is just turn it right down to the simmer and just let it simmer for about 15 minutes. Hopefully in the 15 minute mark, it'll turn to like a slushy mush which is exactly how you want it. You could just leave it cooked for a little bit longer if you want. Um, depends. If you want it really mushy and slushy, might just let it keep going. But 15 minutes is sort of the optimal time for it to be ready. Should I put the timer on? Let's take a look at it in 15 minutes time. But it is something that you do have to sort of come back and check every few minutes and just keep stirring it so it doesn't stick to the bottom because that's the last thing you want is a nice, this to start sort of burning on the bottom. So remember, just come back and stir it every now and then. Now porridge is something you can sort of just add whatever you want to. And well, I'm gonna add in some goji berries or wolf berries, these are called. These sort of are a little bit sweet. Add a little bit of sweetness to it, sort of balances out the sodiumness of the uh, the rest of the sodium stuff I put in. Oh, there's the 10 minute mark. So I'll use about that many. We'll just scatter those through and stir them in. They'll swell up as well because they're dehydrated. So this is uh, looking a little bit too. Oops. Well, there's a 15 minutes. <laughs> So it's still not ready after the 15 minutes. Depends how big your batch is. Hang on, let me just turn this on. But this is looking a little bit dry, so we just want to add a little bit more water just to barely cover it. So normally when we're making this, we make a batch that's about half the size. So this is a bit of a bigger batch that we're making today. And even though the rice is cooked, it's still going to absorb the water um, and break down and, uh, you know, start turning into porridge. Hmm. All right, well, the 20 minute time went off for this amount and this is like a really good texture for porridge right here. I'm actually going to turn this off now so it doesn't cook anymore. But this is a, a good texture, sort of a porridgey looking <laughs> texture. A bit gluey, I guess you could say. Uh, starchy. Starchy, yep, yep, that's a good adjective. So it's not um, soupy, but it's not solid. It's uh, it's porridgey and starchy. Good adjective, Bernice. But there was some other things I wanted to do with this, and one of them, which is an option, is to crack in an egg. Now what I will do first is just give it a little bit of a taste, just test out their sodium levels, because I know they're not going to be enough. Mmm! Well that's good. That's real good. But what I will do is just add a little bit of soy sauce into this just to give it that extra body and depth. And a little bit more sodium because it really does need it. I'll tell you what, that flavour is just great on its own. I'll just add a dash. Just to add a little bit of flavour. That's a dash. That's a dash. Is that too much? Oh my God, look, it's changed color. Oh no! She'll be all right. Normally when Bernice makes it, I'm always adding extra soy sauce anyway, because it's never got enough sodium. But something else you can add is an egg. So, and I will add one because why not? It's a cooking show, I've got to show you how to do stuff, right? So here we go. First, you've got to crack it. <laughs> Oh, gee, what's this made out of titanium? Oh, so we'll throw that in, and we'll just 
stir it through. Is that ever going to break? Yes. And that hot water and the heat in there will cook that in no time. All right, well, that's it, done. How easy is that? It's such an easy recipe. And oh, I just love it. The, the pork in that really does make it uh, taste really good too. So make sure you use pork whenever you're making this. But it's now time to plate this up. So, really easy to plate up. Let's just do that. Now white pepper is probably the best pepper to go with this. It just makes it taste even better. So I'll throw some white pepper onto there. We've got some shallots here, spring onions I should say. So we'll throw some of those on. And here we've got some bawang or some fried shallots or fried onions. Mate, this is like crack to pork porridge. So we'll add some of that on. And we'll just top it off with some ginger that we've finely sliced up there. And there you have it. Oof, mate, I love this stuff. It's like awesome. You've got to try it, it's really nice. So how about we give it a go with a spoon. Mm. Oh. Bravo. Dang diggity. I think mine tastes even better than yours, Bernice. <laughs> the extra sodium, you see. <laughs> Especially when it's cold and wintry, mate, this dish is the absolute bomb. Make sure you give it a go. Super simple recipe, super easy to make. Make sure you give it a go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time for my next recipe. Adios, amigos. Ooh, yeah. This is great. And with the pork porridge I made for you today Perfect for those cold winter nights It is